Oh, yes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone to Transform Your Relationships Live. I'm Laura Rubenstein here with the amazing Dr. Roberta Shaler. Hi, Roberta. Good morning, Laura. And yes, it is the amazing Laura Rubenstein. And we have great things to talk about today. As usual, we're on it. We are. And what I love uh, about what we're going to talk about is letting go. And um, it's a good reminder for us all. I think some of us are better at it than others and the power of it is oh immense don't you think it is and the wisdom <laughs> of it is equally immense because if we think we have to hold on to everything imagine that that's a bag and you're filling it all the time and dragging it along behind you you get awfully tired and the more you put in it the more you drag <laughs> So let's let go of the drag, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you think about it, you know, how do you slow down one of those really, really fast cars, you know, those racing cars where you got this whole parachute behind them trying to drag, creating drag, right? And what do we have that's creating drag and what can we do about it? So that's what we want to talk about today. Yeah, I guess it's about looking at what is creating drag in our lives. And then when we identify that, then we know what we need to let go of. I think some of that is, um, you know, some of it's readiness, some of it's awareness. Where do we start? I think a really good place, if you're not ready to go emotionally, is physically. Like, get rid of your congestion and clutter. And that's really difficult for people. You know, I wrote a book called... Um, put on, um, pack your own parachute. And in there, I say, you know, what are you keeping? Like, I'm just in the process again of shedding another skin. And I'm reminded of what I've written, because if it's functional, memorable, or beautiful, then you can keep it. If it isn't, take a photograph of it. And the rest of it, put it into circulation allow it to circulate and let someone else use it whether you sell it or you give it away but put it back into circulation and sometimes we do that with people sometimes we do that with things um, but that's really what we're talking about is this wonderful idea of circulation and prosperity that if i'm hoarding something and i know that's a really harsh word but you know What's your garage full of or what's your shed full of or do you have a storage locker that you keep meaning to get rid of? I do and it's going this month. Um, I've had it for a year since I left my office behind and I, I really wasn't up to, to doing something with it all. But now I am and it's all going away. There's um, a release of energy that happens and building up to that release is, is challenging. So recently I started in my mind saying 10 things. Can I get rid of 10 things in my life? Like 10 pieces of 10 books, 10 pieces of clothing, um, 10 tchotchkes in my house, uh, just to uh, 10 files, you know, and I just gave that a number. I didn't like make myself wrong or right if I did, but at least I was, I started, right? But then I noticed when, you know, there's a whole conversation that goes on like, oh, it, yeah, I could use this maybe sometime, blah, blah, blah. Or, you or know, I maybe, paid good money for it. Yes. And I hate to let it go. When I hear myself saying that, I'm like, okay, what if, you know, like the title of today's show is if you're willing, you know, what's possible if you're willing to let go, right? So first you got to be willing. So what if I let it go? Let me put it in the donation box, see how I do without it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can actually let that go. So sometimes we have to do these little, mm, I don't know if it's tricks with our mind, but it's little baby steps. Let's call it baby steps <laughs> to letting go of stuff. Now, that I think is a great place to start to let go of stuff because it gets us used to this process of letting go and that we could actually survive it without feeling immense pain. And, and the, 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 the energies we do feel, whether it's negative or positive, we can survive through, right? <laughs> and eventually thrive. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things about letting go is a concept that I call visual silence. I don't think that we live enough in visual silence. Like if there's a big space of floor that has nothing on it, I go, yay. 
oh, it's so quiet. It's lovely. And yet, you know, I have lived with things that I've had for a very long time. And as you know, I gave up a 1,200 square foot office a year ago. And, you know, what do I keep? What do I let go of? And it's been that whole year that I've had a storage unit, only that year. <laughs> but now I know, you know, I know what is not going to happen. I'm not going to have another office. I know that it's time to release those things and I'm ready to do it. But it is that question of, is it actually adding to your life or taking taking up space and and when you when you don't have visual silence you are looking at something all the time and visual silence creates spaciousness you know there are some people who put a picture on every wall and whew, can you breathe when there's a picture on every wall like <laughs> you may be able to i can't right so it's editing, editing your life it, to get some visual silence, to get some spatial silence. I have a funny story about that. People walk into my living room. I have a blank wall there. And some people are so uncomfortable with it. They just can't stand that it's blank. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And I love that visual silence. I, it's not that I don't want to put something there, but when I find the right thing, I will. Uh, and will treat myself to that visual pleasure, I guess, but they just can't stand. <laughs> and people will comment, when are you going to get something for that wall? I'm like, oh no, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, for me, like I've taken things down recently. I've just said, no, it's too much. Mm. And, you know, I used to teach feng shui. So I do have those components and what I'm thinking about and how I'm reordering my home and my life uh, on those principles. And we do want to know where to have silence so that something can come in. If the space is already full, you know, it's like this. If, if I give you a $10 bill and I tell you to hold on really, 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 really tight and you hold really, really, really tight. And then I say, here, Laura, have a hundred dollar bill. You can't. No, I can't. <laughs> I'd have to let go of the 10 to get the, exactly. you know, if you gave me two fives, I'd have to let go of at least one. <laughs> exactly. So if you think about that, if you're holding on to all this stuff, you can't accept more. And that can help you release things. Like, no, I, you know, imagine having an empty shelf. Imagine having an empty cupboard in your kitchen or your bathroom, just empty. You know, it, is there some guidebook somewhere that says you get a house and every single thing has to be full? <laughs> no, but it seems like the nature of human nature is to fill a vacuum. And um, I think the invitation today is to create a vacuum, <laughs> you know, like to create a space, whether it's on a wall, in a drawer, in a cabinet, in a closet, create a space because it's like having a blank canvas. So if you're feeling like you need a change in your life, you, you want something to shift in your life, you need to have room for it, right? Yes. And um, so, you know, keeping that space available or creating that space for it is kind of an energetic um, nod to the universe, to your subconscious that says, hey, I'm ready. I'm available. You can bring it on. Yes, bring it on, baby. I'm, I've got the space. My cup is not full. It doesn't, it, it is available. I am available. You know, it's funny. Oh, 25 years ago, um, uh, you know, I, I used to be a New Thought minister. So all these things were hot and heavy. And I remember reading a book by Stuart Wilde and he's, he was talking about abundance and he said, you know, when you come home and you just see those little round marks where the stereo used to be, you just look at it and say, oh, they came for the stereo. You don't say, who stole my stereo? <laughs> you say, oh, they came for the stereo. It's gone back into circulation. Whoa, that's a big idea. I mean, do we go there? And do we have audio silence? Are you comfortable sitting in the silence? Do you have to clutter that up with sound all the time? Or are you comfortable just sitting silently by yourself? Or do you have to call somebody? Mm. Right? 
uh, can you enjoy a sunset alone or is it not worth it unless it's shared? You know, <laughs> there are things to consider that will bring you way more joy. And when you let something go, you're lighter and you're more energy available. There is more energy available. Yeah. That's exciting stuff. If you think about it in these terms, you may have a stale relationship. You may have a relationship that is kind of, well, what'd you do today? Yeah. And you think, oh, well, we have companionship. Well, do you? Do you have companionship if you talk about the same things over and over and you've gotten into a ritual and a, what turns into a rut? Maybe you need to shift things up. Maybe you need to make a change. Maybe you need to say, let's not talk about that anymore. Um, let it go. Let's go dance. Let's move our bodies. Let's oh, do something Oh, that's your different. thing. <laughs> that's my thing. About, Sorry. <laughs> I was thinking about you the other day and I thought, all right, I really want to go social dancing and I've got to find a place because when Laura and I go to a seminar, just a little aside, everybody, <laughs> when we go to a seminar and everybody says, get up and dance, I go, Hmm. and laura goes where <laughs> yeah i'm like i'm all over it. it's like i get to move my body cool. yeah and and so i was thinking about you and i thought well there i'll grab laura and we'll go dancing that'll be that'll be a good thing to do but what what is it that is weighing us down now it may be physical weight in terms of things and heaviness. It may be emotional. It may be that we're having things to go through in our life that we need some help to get some lift, to get some light. But it's important because we're precious and we matter. So when things we can do for ourselves appear, we have to ask ourselves, if that would make my life better, am I really willing to do it? You know, it also makes me think about this visual silence, this sound silence, this physical silence space. It allows us to listen, you know, to ourselves, ideally. And then I think about, okay, what was the big craving for me, at least when I was growing up, to be heard, to be understood? You know, people want to be heard, but we have to hear ourselves first. And if we give ourselves that gift, and, and it's so, it's such a gift to be heard, right? When somebody hears you and they acknowledge that they heard you and um, they respond to it, it's like, wow, they heard me. I, I must exist if they heard me, right? So now you can do that for yourself by creating this space. You don't have to clutter up the worry that you don't exist. You do exist. Prove it, you know, like to yourself with letting go. Wow. I mean, it's a little bit deep out there concept, but try it. I want to invite people to just try a little visual sound or physical silence. I, I'm all for it. You know, I think we clutter up our lives with have tos and shoulds and musts and go, 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 go. And that's all hype out there. You know, it's coming at us from everywhere, magazines, online, television, going to networking groups, going to seminars. You should do this. If you really, if you really cared about yourself, you'd do this. If you really wanted success, you'd do this and you'd do it my way. And, and by the way, give me $10,000. Yeah. And, and it's all this it. input of what other people think you should be doing. Yeah. Yes. And then if you don't create the space to go, let me sift and sort what's mine. What do I want to bring into my life? What do I not want? I'm not going to bring it in. And what do I have that I'm ready to release? And that could be a thought. It could be a belief. It could be something that you think about the world. Like maybe you think the world is really hard and nobody really gets what they want in life. Maybe you have a belief like that. What if you let that go and said, everything is possible? Ah, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. Like what if you just replaced a belief like that to say, I'm open to receiving and I know anything is possible. And you, and you're looking for the positive. You could find that just 
stopping, you know, having that, that Teflon shield around you that says, well, the world is a difficult place and nobody gets what they want. And you just say, no, that was a made up thing I had made in my head anyway. So now let me put that in with the doors are open to all possibility of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds a bit woo woo. So, you know, clean it up if you want. I'm ready to meet the person who will treat me in a cherishing, loving, mutual, reciprocal and equal way. Instead of there aren't any good men around, <laughs> right? Let's see, I feel speaks. a gas energy, a moving forward energy on, you know, on the question of I'm ready or on the statement I'm ready to, I'm open to, I'm available to, I'm willing to, even I'm willing is good. And then the break is there aren't any, I can't, I don't know how. Um, so today is about being willing to let go of the break the brakes, the drag, like you said, and put the gas on um, because the gas is where you're going to go. <laughs> or maybe even sit in neutral for a while, you yeah. know, and realize, oh, I don't have my foot on the gas or the brake. Maybe I'll be taken somewhere that's best for me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I first had my human design done, one of the biggest things, it was huge for me was to learn that my best mode, my most natural mode, is to respond to life rather than make things happen. Yes. And for many of us, we've got all this stuff, as I said, coming to us from outside. Well, you should make it happen. And if you really want it, you go for it. And you should get up every morning and run 36 miles and do all of these things. And that'll show you really want it. And, you know, okay, maybe on your planet, not on mine. <laughs> and so if you're sitting in neutral for a bit, you can sift and sort and you can open your mind to possibilities. You can play with things in your mind. You can let them sit for a few days and then see where they are without taking any action at all. You know, you're allowed to be still. And if this is bringing up any tension or questions or yeah, buts, or what if, or you don't understand, feel free to chat in the chat box. I am monitoring the chat box over here on Transform Your Relationships Live on the video there. And you may be watching it on another, but come over to Transform Your Relationships Live, comment on this because, um, or if you agree, you know, feel free to give us the, uh, you know, the little thumbs up. <laughs> we love the feedback, but I can't agree with you more. It's just um, letting go is liberating. Ooh, there's an L word. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to come up with a name for the show today. Let go and liberate your life. I mean, like really be able to live the life that you, the, with the energy you want, the positive energy you want. I know some people are connected very much to their negative energy and that is an identity, you know, like used to getting into this rut. And I think that um, we think we can't have anything but, so we can't keep manifesting that. We keep holding on tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, have you seen that? Oh, absolutely. You know, and people people live in the world of uh, never and always, right? I mean, there aren't those extremes in most cases, but we go, oh, they'll never, I'll never have the life I want. Or people are always doing better than I am. Or, you know, whatever limiting belief that you have, you don't have to keep it. Remember, you chose it or it was handed to you. Now is the moment when you can consciously go back and say, hmm, not so sure I want this one. You know, let it go. And, and open yourself to something new and different and wonderful. But if you're all full up because you're clapping, clutching onto those $10 bills, I can't give you a $100 bill because you can't reach for it. You don't have room. And some of the words I like to use are the W words of, I wonder how. And if you catch yourself saying, I don't know how, or I can't, or, I, or it never happens. I wonder how, or I'm willing to. So the wonder and willing can shift the energy and crack open that little pattern just enough to let something new in, to yeah. let it go. So sometimes we just have to let go of those thoughts. Like, oh my gosh, if you catch yourself with those thoughts, that's good. Because then you know you you can do something about it. Like, let it go or shift it and say, oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay, well, I wonder how I could find out. Or I wonder who does know, or I wonder if it's possible, or 
I'm willing to figure it out. I'm willing to explore. I'm, you know, there's such a different energy that you can create in your life. So it is possible. And if we're looking at alliteration, we can add welcome to the willing and wonder. Oh. Because, you know, what if you were open to welcoming something new into your life? You know, Wondering, you willing, and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, hopefully this is a bit of a boost today that maybe this is the moment when you needed to hear this, when you can can open yourself to this and free up some energy and do something differently, entertain a new idea, entertain a new relationship, entertain clearing out your closet um, or your kitchen drawer, start small. You know, I once had a client and I, I'd never met her and it was before video days, but I was on the phone with her and I talked to her three times. And finally I said to her, I'm just going to take a guess. I hope you're not offended, but I'm just going to take a guess at, what I would see if I could see you right now. And she said, okay. And I said, I see an apartment where you can just get into, you have a path to your chair and a path to your microwave and a path to your bedroom. And that you're probably in need of releasing at least 50 pounds. It was a big risk. And she cried. She said, how did you know? Mm. And so what we did over time was I created the three meter rule because I was in Canada, so it wasn't the three foot rule. But what I did was from your head down to make it doable for her, I said from the, your height down when you're standing, let's just do three square meters a day. Anything that you touch has to go into its final resting place. So it's in the donate, it's put where it needs to be, whatever. And three feet, three meters, whichever way you do it, cleansing, clarifying. She did it. Wow. She awesome. thought it was undoable. Baby. She was overwhelmed with clutter and congestion. And of course, because she couldn't move anywhere, she was doing everything in the microwave. So she was living on microwavable foods. So when she started recognizing she's moving around, she's doing things. And oh, by the way, I have a kitchen. <laughs> so, you know, she got a great result because she released weight. She released all kinds of things. She got her home back. But most importantly, she got a feeling of empowerment. I could do something about this. I could choose to let go. And Gail saying cleansing, clarifying, love that tip and her two favorites. So thank you, Gail. Um, we, you know, letting go is um, if you can consciously take some time every week, I don't know, I don't know if it's every day for anybody, but on a periodic basis, it can open up so much, especially if you want things to shift and transform in your life, in your relationships, in your um, emotional well-being, right? So just, I, we invite you to explore letting go, be willing. And what is it to let go? Don't know. It's going to be different for everyone. It could be a physical thing like you're talking about in the kitchen. You know, I was thinking, start with your sock drawer, you know, <laughs> right? Because you know, there's stockings and socks in there that you haven't worn in, or they have holes in them. Okay, I'm, I'm revealing about me. So <laughs> it's probably a few, you know, dozen socks or whatever, you can release. And I do my 10 things. Can I release 10 pieces of underwear from my sock drawer, my underwear and sock drawer? And, and it could be physical, but it could just be a matter of um, getting unhooked about being mad about something, you know, being upset about something. It's like, okay, is this really um, worth being upset about? Who am I hurting or forgiving or, you know? Let me add to that one. You know, okay. I, I've written a lot of music that went with all the things that I talked about probably 15 years ago. And one of the things that I really invite people to do is to catch yourself before you go down the rabbit hole of limitation or the rabbit hole of, oh, this is terrible, or why is this happening to me? Uh, just catch yourself there and just ask yourself this question. For what might this be good? Mm -hmm. Just shift your brain at that moment and ask that question for what might this be good and you will see things in a different light you will see it in the light of possibility as opposed to in the in the light of ending and shutdown this may be an opening and here i am thinking of it as an ending for what might this be good 
for what might it be good to let that go, right? And if you think about that, even if it's a, a belief in your head, for what might it be good to let it go? And you think about possibilities that can become very attractive. Yes. And that's a good energy to play in whatever brings you to that. Oh, this might be good for something. Then you can do something with it versus being stuck. So letting go is about getting unstuck, bottom line you know, in mm-hmm. life and, and really thriving and having that and being able to envision more and have more creativity and access to more of who we authentically are. More flow. Flow, baby. Yes. Yeah, Let go it. and flow. That's what we should have <laughs> named There we go. We're getting good now. We but, finally determined the, fl- the subject today. <laughs> but, you know, there can't be flow when there is a dam. Right. And if you're damming things up, you can open the floodgates. You can see what the possibilities are and you can do it a little bit at a time so you don't feel overwhelmed. But it's a conscious choice to let go. But in order to make that conscious choice, you have to stop and spend some time in the quiet with yourself to say, what do I want? What am I welcoming? What am I willing to do? I wonder if this could really be a good idea. Get curious. Get really, really curious. I think that's a great place to step into. I wonder. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a great place to, I think, leave us here with everyone to ponder, to take a few moments, get curious. And if you want more inspiration from Roberta, you'll want to find her at trans uh, at forrelationshiphelp.com. <laughs> That's F-O-R, relationshiphelp.com. And you can find my inspirational uh, site at transformtoday.com. And we're always here for you. We've got lots of resources and helping you open those doors to the flow and let go of the old. And if you're listening and it generated a question, put it in the comments. We read the comments. We respond to the comments below this video. And if you have a question, we'll do our best to work it into a show soon. Yes. We look forward to that. We'll see you in another couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Bye for now.